Hey everybody, I'm coming at you from the greenhouse again, and it's a cold night, but it's about 60 something degrees in here because of the heater. And I wanted to update you on what I did in my last video. So you guys remember this Echeveria Valacena that I got from Las Vegas back in November. And last time I beheaded it because I thought that maybe it had that mycoplasma and I threw the edge of uh, the end of it away and if you can look it wasn't that long ago I'll have to look and see how long it was and I'll put it on there but we've got two babies here now I just sprayed it down with a little bit of alcohol and water but there's two babies there there's one there and then there's one here so I'm hoping that these guys will develop and not have the mycoplasma i don't see any uh, well actually there's there's no that that's the one i showed you before anyway so one two and three four so we've got these guys so anyway um wanted to show you guys that and then also i wanted to talk to you a little bit about spraying your plants with alcohol now you guys may remember in my last videos, I showed you some of these Dick Wright hybrids that I have, but I'm gonna go ahead and admit to you that I made a big mistake, and I've always filled this up with isopropyl alcohol and sprayed everything down, and normally I just use the 70% and everything's been fine. I just kinda do it as a preventative, but I made the mistake because I had this stuff, um, isopropanol, 99.8%, and I thought, well, I'll just add a little bit of water to it and that way it won't be so strong, but I didn't think about how much I really needed to dilute it. So I just went around spraying everything as usual and I kept thinking something was wrong and I was getting some sort of fungus or a bug were eating my plants, but I'm gonna show you what happened to these guys. So don't, don't hate me, but this is the Verrugas now. You can see where it literally got burned, but there's new growth coming out. Here's the speed bumps. I burned him too. I burned them all. Here's the ballerina, burned her. But look, on all these, red trump, uh, he got a little bit of a burn. Here's la femme, got burnt, but it's growing back now. And then Lucy V, I burnt her too. And the good thing is, I have plenty of time so I can wait for these guys to grow back but the bad news is I did this on so many plants oh the ballerina same thing but new growth looks good and that's what I'm worried about I have all winter so I'm not worried I did it on some of my other ones this one was so bad I actually ripped out the center but now it's growing back but just little things like the superbum whatever the heck that was and I want you to meet Nico Nico Nico, hey, sit. Oh, this is my new baby. Hey, Nico, Shay. Oh, he's such a good boy. Anyway, meet Nico Pup. He's friends with Moxie Pup. Anyway, moving on. Um, as you can see, I've done this with so many of my plants. It's not even funny, like this ghost plant. And then let me go ahead and move over and, oh, one more Verrugas, so terrible so terrible and these aren't even the ones that are in the house but I sprayed the ones in the house too the only thing that is my hope is that the new growth looks great so I'm not super worried and like I said all I have is time so I learned once and I want you guys to learn from my mistake and I know a lot of people can't get their hands on the 99.9 or 99.8 percent isopropanol and that's great I beheaded this a while back and then sprayed it right after and sure enough I burned it a little bit but I'm going to show you something else I did which I'm really embarrassed about but I want to show you. So you guys I truly believe that my plants were getting a fungus but I should have known better because it was only affecting the new growth and you know I love the Echeveria raindrops and one day they were all looking fine and then literally the next day they all had the black stuff just right on the new growth and so i thought oh my gosh i have fungus again even though the humidity wasn't any worse than normal and so now i'm realizing that it was the alcohol because they literally all had it 
one day and none of them had it the night before but look at these raindrops I don't even really want to show you they're finally growing out of it but you can see the damaged portions and you can see the new growth that looks good so new growth all looks great and by the time this season's over you know they're gonna grow all winter here but that's because I keep my greenhouse warm so I'm kind of simulating uh, a warmer growing season so they won't go dormant like they usually do but they are all growing back I thought it, it looks like it could be bug damage but it was only the new growth and I didn't even want to show anyone when it was a new growth because it looked so bad but they're all coming back normally and they're all gonna make a full recovery I didn't lose any of them but I really feel bad about what I did and I just didn't know any better and I don't want you guys to make the same mistake. So now I wanna talk about my next project. Okay, so actually before I talk about my next project, I figured I ought to tell you what to do if you have the 99% isopropanol. So 99, basically rounded up to 100. So that means if you know that 70% is safe then go ahead and you would need seven parts of the alcohol and then the other three parts would be water and make sure you mix that together really well and spray things after that and don't leave this laying around in your greenhouse or outside because even though it's closed the water will evaporate when i leave this thing out here every day it's a little bit lower so do not leave this out here and think it's okay you need to put it inside somewhere or put it somewhere where it's completely sealed and do not have it do not have it super potent you've got to dilute it and that's why it was only happening on the new growth i was just wondering i've got some other ones around here um if i can show you um let me see had some okay i'll show you one of the worst ones but i really don't even want to show you but it's finally coming back this one I sprayed and sprayed and sprayed because I thought something was going so wrong and I just kept spraying with the super high potent alcohol. It just kept getting worse and worse. And then when I finally stopped spraying, now the new growth is coming back. So this is a blue quartz, um, is it Echeveria or Pachyveria? I, I can't remember, but it's, a, it's called a blue quartz. So anyway, I have a lot like this. Like this was one, thought it had a fungus. It wasn't, I just kept spraying it with alcohol. Same thing here, this is a xanth rose. I just kept wondering, what, what is this? It's not coming off, it's not edema. And it turns out it was just literally getting burned, not even because of the sun. It's just that alcohol was so strong, it was burning it. So I want you guys to know that if you use any kind of strong alcohol, you need to dilute it. And I wouldn't even, be surprised if it would be okay to dilute it down to 60 or 50 percent because I think that would probably kill some stuff but this is another one where I, I heard it but now that I've stopped doing it all the new growth on these guys look great so anyway this is kind of the hospital area in case you're wondering so it's not every single plant in the greenhouse but just want to show you and here's that Madiba I showed you last time she's doing great I never did spray her so thank goodness but anyway, now I do want to tell you about my new project. So give me just a minute and we're going to change locations. Oscar! Hi! Okay, so just like last time, if you will excuse my mess, this is my indoor grow light setup. And I showed it to you in the last video, but I want to briefly introduce the lights to you because this is what we're going to be talking about in my next video. So. What I want to do in probably the next six or maybe more videos is I want to do a grow light experiment. And I know that we're going into the winter months and a lot of you guys have questions about grow lights. And I won't say that I'm an expert on grow lights, but I do want to do an experiment on three different types. And I've learned a little bit about them, especially just since I've been using these guys. So what I'm gonna do in my next video is I'm gonna show you three different grow lights. I'm gonna tell you the specs. Then I'm gonna take the same plant, or actually probably a few of each of the same plants, and I'm gonna put them under each of them. And I'm gonna give you guys updates over the next few months and show you what happens with the plants. But I will tell you right now, this one is called a Fight Electric Grow Lamp. Sorry if it's so bright, but anyway, 
I've been keeping my heart's delights under these and you guys saw these in the last video and they've really been keeping their stress colors but you'll see how close they are to the light so pretty dang close and then down here these are some of the other Dick Wright hybrids and I will admit to you that I did spray them with alcohol so you can see a little bit of the damage but you know we've got our lilac snow here I showed these to you last time there's a Rosalie two cameos then back there uh, actually, that's another Rosalie, two Midways, and then that is a Marjorie Pogue. That's the one that got chewed up by something, but look at the new growth. So it's so much more pretty. It's also under a Fight Electric. And then this bottom one, I'm going to tell you more about it next time. It's a commercial electric. It's a, it's actually made as a shop light, and but they're, they're all LEDs, okay? And so under here, I do have some of my private collection and then a few more of the Hearts Delights. So what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to talk to you about these lights. I'm going to talk to you about the prices, the specs, and then we're going to do a, we're going to start an experiment and see how they do over the winter and how they do in the house. And we'll go from there. But I've never really done this before and I've never really had indoor grow lights other than the old T5 shop lamps and that was when I used to just grow things in my house like basil when I lived alone. So this is going to be totally different because we're dealing with succulents. Anyway, I want to give you kind of a preview of what I'm going to be doing in the future, but I want to show you the lights just kind of give you a little preview. So. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and we did have a subscriber winner last time, and I messaged you in the comments, but I haven't heard back yet, so if you are watching and you are a subscriber, go back and see if you got a reply in your comments, because I haven't heard back, and if you win, you're going to get one of these Hearts Delights, so anyway, I love you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next video where we're going to start a light experiment. Bye-bye.